Hi everyone, it's Tarnished Treasures and today I'm sharing another one of my collections. I was reading Victorian Homes Magazine. This is Fall 2017 volume and there was an article in the back called A Lady's Sanctuary Collecting Dressing Table Antiques. And when I looked at the pictures, I realized that I had um, several of these things so I thought I'd share them with you. So there are these powder jars, or they could store anything, with the repoussé tops. A repoussé is when the metal is pushed from the reverse side to make the pattern. Um, this vanity tray has a mirrored top with some beveling. They have one of these at the thrift store, but it is not for sale. I've had my eye on it. Hand mirrors, button hooks. And then we have crystal perfume bottles, vanity mirrors, these beautiful glass containers that have these stoppers. I've seen those before. I haven't picked them up, but I've had my eye on them. And then some pieces that I don't have. So I thought I'd share with you what I do have. So my um, very first pieces were these. And then it kind of snowballed into more of a collection and just you know finding things since I purchased these. So these have sterling tops and it's a little hard to see the mark from the outside because of the tarnish and because they're so detailed but you can see that there's a marking down there at the bottom. But if you flip it to the inside it's usually a lot easier to see because since this is on a container the air doesn't get to it and the air is what oxidizes and darkens the sterling so if you're ever looking for it i always suggest flipping it open and then you can see how that ray pousse is done where the design is pushed out from the reverse so you could store craft supplies. You could organize your office. You could put um, little lotions in these, cotton balls. I just keep them plain. I just really just love how they look. So I found this one at a hospital sale and then I found this at a little thrift slash antique store. And I don't think that I paid more than five or ten dollars for them. And then I found these this summer and fall. So Powder jars, I think, are what you call these. And this one has a beautiful Art Nouveau woman with flowers on it. And the difference between Art Nouveau and Art Deco, or an easy way to spot it, is Art Nouveau is going to be very um, curvy and organic and even have organic flowers and vines. And Art Deco is very geometric, square, circle, angles, and straight lines. So this one has a little pattern on the edge and this one has the same type of ribbed pattern whereas this one is just straight. So I found this actually at the same hospital sale that I found this piece just years apart. And then this was at an estate sale this summer and it was marked separately but part of uh, this vanity set. And I picked this up for $10 and I see one at the thrift store right now marked at 60 so I think I got a great deal on this. It has some engraving and I loved the bows and right now I just have some pink Christmas ornaments in it to add a little bit of color to the inside. The other pieces that came along uh, with that vanity set were I think a nail file so here's an example of a nail file and all these pieces are um, sterling. And that one's marked right there. I think I paid a dollar for that at um, an estate, a different estate sale. And then this vanity set came with three pieces, but just this portion is going to be sterling. And the top is different metal and it rusts. And you'll even notice in some of these button hooks that I have how they're rusty. Well, this set was so rusty, it actually stained my hands for a week. So I had my husband cut off the rusty portion because I was not going to use the nail file and I really didn't need the rust getting anywhere. And I thought these were the beautiful pieces. So right now I just have these in my little craft stash, but with the one piece, you can see that I made a moth. So I'll probably make more. And then I really just like that displayed. So they stay together and it's just found a new life. 
I also have these button hooks. These were an amazing find at a flea market. They were marked $4 a piece. And I asked the man if I bought them all, what deal would he give me? And he said $2 a piece. So I want to say I bought 30 at $2 a piece. So I spent $60 for all of these. And each one is just so beautiful with the workmanship and the designs. That's why I couldn't just pick one or two to buy when I was there. I just had to have the whole collection. He told me that he got these at an auction and he said they were probably 300. So I got a, a tenth of what he had purchased. And there's even one that is a Tiffany and Company. See, look at that beautiful hand engraving. Oh, just love it. Um, so I haven't, most of these um, hooks are in good condition, so I don't plan on removing them, but the other set on my hand, some of those videos, I just <laughs> look like I might have had the disease. That's how bad that rust had stained. The Tiffany one is actually on the simple side. I'm, I think this is the... Nope, it's not that one. It was this one. So that has a very deco feeling to the monogram. And when I looked close after I polished it up, somewhere, yep, right there, it said Tiffany. I couldn't believe it. So another part of my, what are they calling this? My dressing table antiques are my jewelry caskets. And these, again, have a very nouveau feeling with the natural flowers and vines and the curvy organic lines as well. Um, I don't know what material this is. I don't wanna say brass. It's probably just like a gold color on top of some type of base metal. And on the inside, satin or silk with a little bit of cording. It'll be faded, um, it'll be tattered, because if it's silk, it's the natural material that's just gonna deteriorate um, over time. And I just keep little baptism pins in there. And then in here, I think sometimes I have essential oils, but you can see how they're shredded, and then there's some of that older cotton, I guess, just to pad it a little bit. So I found the big one at an estate sale and I found this one at um, the thrift store. And then I have some of these glass ones and I, my very first one that probably is from the 1800s, I actually used it for a Pandora assemblage. And then these are ones that I just keep um, out. This one was found on eBay. Uh, most likely it's a reproduction because I did not pay very much for it, but it still has that beautiful beveled glass so thick it's mirrored and it has the metal detail around it. And this one was found at an estate sale this summer. Needs to be repaired a little, but I just dis you know, display them. So it's got a hinged lid. I just lift it off. And then in these, I usually keep these little, I don't want to call them compacts, but they kind of are makeup containers and tins. This one has a beautiful, beautiful Nouveau design. Melba. And then I wanna say that this brand is Cody and it's metal. Look at that pattern on there, so fancy. Lipstick, let me open it. Well, I can't get it open, so there must be some little trick. I can see that there's that little gap there, so I don't know. Um, and then I have some perfume bottles. Now, I didn't bring out the more modern ones. I tried to show you the things that are older. So there is this piece. Now, I always call this a tear catcher in my videos because that's what the man said who sold it to me. And it was the same man that I bought the button hooks from. And he really did have these older pieces. And I do think that uh, these are Victorian. I looked on eBay to do a little research and read the descriptions. And um, many of these cut glass pieces that had these little stoppers, everyone was calling it Victorian. Um, it doesn't have a very long dauber though. And that would be the long piece that went in 
if perfume were kept in here. Um, and when people say tear catchers, I don't really think that means they're trying to catch their tears. A lot of people um, say it's for the smelling salts and they would have kept smelling salts in there. So I don't really know what this would have been used for, but you can see that the hole is not centered. It's thicker here, thinner there. And I think that's something that helps show the date along with how tiny this little glass stopper is. Just amazing. And then this is my newest piece that I just shared the other day in my thrift haul video. And uh, I looked online, there was a piece very, very similar on eBay that uh, you could decant your own perfume in. So I hope you enjoyed seeing these. And uh, the article just talks about, let me see here. Um, the dressing room of every well-bred woman should be both elegant and cultural. And in this part, they talk about how uh, in King Tut's tomb, they found a cedar box that had makeup and jars and perfume. So he was maybe the first person to have the first vanity. It talks about uh, Madame de Pompadour, and she had a whole room that was a boudoir with her dressing table for pampering and primping and a space where a woman could retreat. And they just talk about collecting powder jars, brush and hand mirror sets, vanity trays, perfume bottles, pin cushions, and jewelry caskets that make a true collector's heart beat faster. So I hope you enjoyed seeing this. And uh, I've really been enjoying this Victorian Homes magazine and those little collections that they have towards the end, the end of the magazine. Thanks for watching everyone and I'll see you in another video. Bye.